located along the northeast coast of Panama, the San Blas Islands are a vast archipelago of breathtaking colours. Consisting of more than 340 islands along about a hundred mile of coastline, these islands are a cruiser's paradise, and they're only inhabited by the very friendly Guna Indians. Excellent snorkeling, beautiful white sandy beaches, and crystal clear water with plenty of fish. We are in heaven. But first we need to get out of this lagoon with all these coral heads and bombies splashed all over the place. Now, which way to go to get out of here? Mm, that's no good. And that's no good either. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Ah. The next day we were on our way. Only doing four knots, but who wants to be in a hurry around here? We are heading over here. Why? Because it is a terribly rolly anchorage, and no one ever goes there. Why would we ever do this? Keep watching to find out. We found not one, two, we found three islands that are just completely empty, just for ourselves. There are no natives around, there are no cruisers or charters. One, two, there's another one right here. Can we get a sailboat chasing down the sunset as we float? Round and round the globe Salty air and balmy nights Guided only by the lights above And a light, little love All the world is out there waiting to explore And all our troubles here want them to be This is what you see in most of the islands in San Blas, it's full of plastic bottles. Uh, San Blas is the end tip of the Caribbean, so all the rubbish that is produced on the Caribbean ends up here on these beautiful islands and it's just really sad to see what's, what's happening. In case you wonder how cruisers that spend months away from going to mainland uh, get rid of their rubbish, um, a way of doing it is burning it and that's what we've been doing it lately. Another alternative is you can give it uh, for one dollar to the local natives and they will burn it but some of the natives they ended up not burning it and they just throw it back to the they just throw it to the ocean so we just prefer to do it ourselves because we know where it's going to end up. Very early in the morning with the wind and the Colombian swell we had a very rocky anchorage but it soon settled. We expected it to occur again tonight so we decided to set up a bridle on the anchor chain to reduce the pendulum motion. So at the moment it doesn't look bad at all. We've got a little bit of chop coming from here, but believe it or not, it's enough that if it matches the shape of the hull, it gets a swinging. Not to mention we've got Columbia over there and we get this ground swell wrapping around and they had 50 knots uh, the two nights ago, so it's due in. And so we're gonna start to be very uncomfortable here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a bridle where I'm gonna meet the swell at about 30 to 45 degrees this way and the ground swell I'm going to have the stern facing that way so we're going to be roughly 90 degrees to the wind so I've got the uh, chain hook on here with a long line going back to the cockpit and all I'm going to do 
I'm going to keep this tension on here because as I release the chain, uh, if I don't, the chain hook will fall off and that'll annoy me because I have to go put it back on. So essentially, we've got the chain going down to there, we've got this line going down to there, and then the anchor chain goes off there. Now the wind at the moment is northwest, so we're not that far off. The wind's a bit light though, it's better to have stronger wind because then it pushes you away and it actually it's a bit more balanced. Now all I have to do is go back to the back and pull it in until I get the balance right. It's different for all boats, you just play with it and you'll end up working out where you can point your boat and of course where it's the most comfortable. So follow me. So we just got to wait till it gets to an equilibrium and then I'll either release it and or bring it in a bit. But if you notice, now the swell, we're not actually, we're just bobbing up and down, we're not doing the pendulum and um, because I'm a little bit sensitive at night. Yes, I can sleep, doesn't matter where. Yeah, Margarita, she's fine, she can sleep wherever. But the marbles in my brain keep on rattling and so that wakes me up. Tweaking complete. As you can see, just a gentle up and down motion and no more pendulum motion. Well, that's a good one. Oh no! It's ran out of power. These coconuts, the older ones, I like their milk. Well, sorry, I like the flesh better, it's much harder, but sometimes the milk's a bit off. You're very successful. Are you part Guna? I think I'm a bit taller than them. How did he climb this? Jesus! You hug me like that. Yep. All right. Come to the rescue. Oh Jesus! Can you come? You're quite high, sweetie. I think you're a bit optimistic.
You want me to get you? Coconut asks are great to start a fire and get coals quickly. They work great. We marinated the fish for three hours in orange juice and honey before going to the barbecue. Well, one's almost done. I'm not talking about the barbecue either. Mmm, looking good. Look at that, people. That is excellent. This is our little picnic at the beach. First time launching the drone while we're sailing, we're pretty nervous. <laughs> okay, go. Okay. We should have been filming behind. If you want to watch more behind the scenes, become a patron and get access to exclusive content.